Hello everybody. This is episode 2, part 2 of Old Dogs Ride Free. Bongo and I are continuing our ride up to Sheridan, Indiana on the Monon Trail. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> oh, skunk. Goodness. I'm pretty sure Bongo's enjoying himself. Watching him in the camera, I could see that he's just laid back. You ride by some dogs, he's pretty cool with that. I think we'll skip the dog park just because there's so many dogs out and he just gets loud. So, but I think he's doing okay. We've already gone almost four miles, so it'll be a quick ride up there. I guess that's not a dog park. That's just a community park for the people that live there. Ah, there's the dog park. Not accessible from this side, unfortunately. Thank you. That's some rain silos here, that's what that noise is, if you can hear it. As you can see, cornfields, soybean fields. So this section's definitely up towards more in the country, which is nice. I'm on your left. I guess this camera really makes it look like I'm right next to people, but I'm a good five feet away. So. This, this section of trail, it's nearly as wide as the nickel plate. Probably 12 feet or thereabouts. Of course, it narrows up up here. Hence the sign that says Trail and Arrows.
been thinking about taking him through well when the summer hits maybe take him through the country on some gravel roads and stuff but uh, sitting there thinking uh it's probably a bad idea because the gravel and the dust would kick up and bother him so we probably shouldn't do that i'll have to do that by myself so nice to be able to get out on a beautiful day and ride. Being stuck in the house kind of messes with your mood quite a bit. Such a beautiful day. Part of the nice being, thing being out too is to listen to birds, the squirrels barking at you. Chasing each other. <laughs> Bouncy back there, huh? When I was a kid, we lived in the country along the Bartholomew County and Brown County line in high school, and it was really nice just to be able to go out and do stuff, fish in the pond, and wander around. We had horses and the dogs and a cat that was a barn cat and then a, oh, I had rabbits. I wasn't a very good caretaker of rabbits. But, uh, yeah, when I learned how to ride a motorcycle there, we had a little 1975 Yamaha DT125. Dad taught us to ride there. It was fun. And I've been hooked ever since. It's probably why I stick to the uh, dual sport motorcycles that are inclined to be on-road and off-road. funny up here in the country we actually had one of those little bicycle tools and air stations it's kind of cool it's neat that the people building these trails actually think about that stuff to help people I can't imagine having to walk your bike eight miles <laughs> or or longer to get home of course I, I bring tools and then bring an inner tube to replace one if it goes bad 
Should probably get a patch kit or bring both inner tubes, but just in case. When I lived in Colorado, I was kind of, I don't know, not necessarily anti-patch kit, but on the trails there, they would have these things called goat heads, and they were pretty much really big burrs with huge thorns. And I had gotten into some on my mountain bike, and I think I put, you know, 20 something holes in the front and similar amount in the rear. So there's no patch kit that's gonna cover that. But thankfully that happened and I wasn't too far away from the car, so. But after that, I got what was called, a, I believe they're called mooses, M-O-U-S-S-E, I think. For, but pretty much all they are, a big tube of solid rubber, or circle of solid rubber that you put in instead of inner tubes. But they were sure heavy to pedal, so they made it a lot harder to get in the, up in the mountains. But just a whole lot of spinning weight there inside the tire. Especially living, I was in Denver living, so then you'd get up at altitude, you know, 10,000, 11,000 feet and definitely feel it. I think that's about the highest I ever went on a mountain, on the mountain bike. There was a mountain pass road that I love to go through. I, it was, I mean, it wasn't a hard road, but I really enjoyed it. It was called Boreas Pass, and it was in between, I think it was Como, which used to be a very small mining town, and then uh, in Breckenridge, Colorado. It was, I can't remember if I just said, but it was Boreas Pass, B-O-R-E-A-S. It was a mild forest road. I'd take my Jeep there or the motorcycle, the mountain bike. It was a good road to ride up on the mountain bike. It was better to go down on it though. <laughs> Probably really enjoy it on this. Go ahead and check on Bongo for a second. Doing okay back there? Oh, you got your head leaning out, huh? Just chilling? Is that a fun time? Yeah, I bet it is. Smelling all the new smells and such. Huh? Let's get you some water, buddy. You want out for a second? Hmm. There you go. Oh, sorry, no, don't spill it. I know, thank you. I want to say thank you. I appreciate you watching me and Bongo's ride. If you would, please like and subscribe. I think Bongo's been enjoying his ride, so we will keep doing more. If you're interested in either versions of the Juliet or the Romeo e bikes by Eohora, please um, purchase them from the links listed in the description. Purchases through those links will help me to save up money for a new editing computer, which is sorely needed. Um, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.